Hey guys, it's Tech Flash. Okay, so we know that Google is coming up with the Tensor chip. It's a fact. It's been benchmarked and it's been announced by Google as well. This was rumored for a bit, but no one really was sure what it was or if it was actually true or not. Google had previously been using a variety of Snapdragon chips, but also running in the background were rumors about Google working on a project and designing its first ever internally built silicon. Now, there are a couple of benefits to doing this and it's not exactly something new. Probably the biggest example we have in front of us is Apple that has its own internally built A Bionic series chips. Similarly, Samsung has Exynox and even Huawei has its own lineup with the Kirin chips. And actually, Google has been using some bits and pieces of internal silicone in a couple of places like on the camera system for the image processing. But having a full on chip controlling the whole device is taking things to another level. In my opinion, this is really important because of the amount of opportunities Google has when it comes to the software. But the main question remains, what really is the Tensor chip and what is its main purpose? Well, that's a bit of a tricky question. A few weeks back, we saw some benchmark scores being leaked for the Pixel 6 Pro and the numbers were really not that great. So it pretty much is clear that performance may not be the forte of the Tensor chip. Then what is the purpose of it? And why is Google going to great lengths to come up with their own chip when they can easily outsource a better performing chip like the upcoming Snapdragon 898? And the answer to that may be optimization and expansion. Let me explain. Google makes Android, which means that they are in a lot of control when it comes to the tweaks and features of the software. But with that, there is always a level of restriction with the processors. For example, when it comes to updates, at the moment, Android can push out updates, but only as far as Qualcomm or Exynox officially support them. Let's say Android will support up to three years of software updates. With the Tensor chip, there's a possibility that Google can push up to five years or even more as compared to other Android phones. This also leads to people keeping their phones for longer. Companies have started to realize that people are now holding on to their devices. A great example of this is actually Apple. Apple has made a lot of money from iPhones, but now after looking at the trend of people upgrading less and less, Apple was able to expand and provide other services from which they could earn profits like Apple TV, iTunes, Apple News, and all of these different services that you can buy and pay monthly and make you keep your phone for longer. When it comes to optimization, there are two big fields where Google can really make a difference. Number one is the camera and we all know that the Pixel phones probably have the best camera system and imaging out there. But the thing is that Google has been using pretty much the same sensor from the Pixel 2 ever since. The reason for that is that Google was able to find the sweet spot in terms of image processing and software while making minimal changes to the actual hardware. With the Tensor chip, Google was finally able to switch it up. Now with the Pixel 6, the camera system is completely new new and with the bigger sensor. Second, the battery life. We all know how much of a difference the efficiency of the Bionic chips make in an iPhone. For example, no iPhone at the moment has a battery bigger than 3000 milliamperes. In fact, the iPhone 13 Pro Max also has just a 3095 milliampere battery, which seems really low compared to almost everyone else that's putting at least 4000 and even 5000 milliampere batteries. But the efficiency of the A15 Bionic chip allows it to have a better battery life than others. Even even with the M1 chip, the same Intel powered MacBooks were able to put out almost double in terms of battery life just because of the efficiency of the M1. And there's a chance that the battery life may significantly improve in the upcoming Pixel 6 phones. Last but not least, this may as well be an entry point for Google to expand its ecosystem based on its internally built silicon. In the same way that Apple has introduced a variety of chips and products amongst its ecosystem thanks to their own silicon being available, there's a chance that this may as well be the beginning of Google's future where we may see a scaled up version of the Tensor chip being introduced in a Chromebook or a scaled down version being put in a Pixel speaker or a smartwatch. So seeing the first generation of the Tensor chip will be very interesting and we'll be able to witness what it eventually does and what it brings to the future. In my personal opinion, right now Google may not be focused on the performance side so much as it is in just putting something out there that they can claim as their own, which will give them much more control down the line. A lot of people were hoping
hoping to see something very powerful with the tensor chip and it is kind of expected when an OEM does this but if you ask me now what is the tensor chip and what will it do I will say the tensor chip is an introduction into a wider array of products and services that Google will bring in the future anyways guys that is it for the video this was your daily dose of tech let me know down in the comments below what you think of Google Pixel 6 and the tensor chip if you enjoyed the video please drop a like and remember to subscribe and help us reach 5,000 subs by the end of the year thank you once again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out